Sunday we saw a little bit of fire from Justin uh, when he spiked that ball at the delay of game. He said he apologized to Will. When, what is your take on that kind of quarterback? Obviously, we know he's a leader out there. In that moment, is, uh, is that a terrible thing? Do you not mind seeing him do that? No, it's, just, it's a great thing. It's just a competitor out there competing, and he and Will are tight. So there's a lot that goes out there sometimes in the game, and uh, there's no one that cares more than Justin. So I love seeing that. Is, is there any part of the process of this for Justin growing as a quarterback, learning that like that's that's an okay thing to do? Like he, he's obviously felt bad about it mm -hmm. when you're just talking to him, but part of being a quarterback is sort of you know talking to guys in that manner when things aren't going correctly and having a procedural error. Yeah. It's part of his process in this development, learning that like it's okay to, to be that guy, maybe not to that degree, but but in that vein. Well, Justin's been a quarterback his whole life. So Justin knows how to lead a football team. Um, wherever he's been, he's been extremely successful doing it. And I think what Justin has is he has the full respect of his teammates because of who he is and how hard he works. And so when there is a moment that happens like that, everybody knows that it's coming from a good place because he's earned that mantle of respect. So uh, I think it's energizing for everybody on the sideline um, because he doesn't do it often. And um, so I think you know, we all know uh, how special of a competitor Justin is and uh, that, that that was coming from a good place. So I was going to ask too, is it even more um, something you, you like to see because he's a guy who doesn't typically do that? Or was it a moment that was even cooler to see because of that? I just trust Justin's judgment, you know, and I think that's part of being a quarterback is you got to use your judgment. And, you know, it's good to um, <clears throat> go with what you're feeling sometimes, you know, and when you're in the heat of competition there's going to be some times where it gets edgy you know and when you're the quarterback there's no one that's more responsible for more than you and so um and him and will are great teammates i mean will and him have an awesome connection and they're not the only center quarterback tandem in the history of the league to have something like that happens and all you got to do is go on you know youtube to find it you know any of the great players that have ever played that position so um we're past that and we're, we're on to the next thing as long as it's not calculated from the heart and it's in the spur of the moment. Yeah, those those two guys are awesome and uh, you know. Peyton Manning's probably a good example of that. Either you just pick a pick a quarterback. Pick a quarterback and I'm sure that there's there's been a bunch of them. What are you seeing from the uh, Ravens offensively obviously Lamar playing at a high level? Yeah, just a complete team. Um, you know, I, my respect goes out to Mark Andrews cuz he's a hell of a player. Hopefully he gets well soon. Um, you know, but I think they've got a full stable of running backs. Uh, full stable of receivers. Even with Mark out, they have, you know, three really capable tight ends and, you know, an offensive line. They've had some attrition, but they've been able to withstand it. And, you know, when you have Lamar at quarterback, um, you know, it's a tough, as tough of a cover as you're going to have in the in the league. So, um, they're doing a good job offensively. How much work did you guys do on Zay Flowers, and, and what makes him a, a special player? Receiver? Yeah, did a lot of work on Zay. Um, you know, we had. Uh, you know, all the, you know, that whole group of run of receivers in that first round, we did a lot of work on all those guys. So uh, he's having a good season for them. I think he's got, um, you know, what he did at Boston College. He's able to move without, within the formation. He can play in the slot. He can play out wide. Um, he's carried the football for them. Um, he's got a, a diverse route tree. Uh, he played, you know, in a pro style system for Frank Signetti, you know, at Boston College. So he was able to run a pro tree and um, he's having a good season for him. You know, and that receiving core, I mean, with Odell and, and Aguilar and Bateman and that group of guys, that's a it's a really good it's a deep receiving core, De as deep of receiving core as they've had. How will you uh, replace Joey Bosa? Is that possible? You got to do it as a group. You know, we've had to play a lot of games here without Joey. Um, we're going to miss him. I, I'm I'm really um, it's tough for me with Joey because he's he's had such a good off season. He's been totally committed, and I thought he's having an outstanding season. So, you know, he's he's <laughs> enduring the tough side of the NFL. Uh, but we're going to be there for him, you know, and, and you know, he's got to make his way back. And, you know, what we got to do is we got to hold the rope for him until he gets back like we did last year. You know, this group held it down and then Joey got a chance to come back and impact our team. So we're going to have to do it as a unit. Um, you know, I thought Justin came in and gave us some really good snaps. Andrew is a guy that's been working and, and that we think's got, you know, potential. And, um, and then Thule and K-Mac are, are going to have to continue to do what they do. But you gotta, you got to do it as a group. You know, no one's going to take away Joey's production. He's one of the top players in the league. Just how, would you, how would you kind of quantify Thule's growth over the course of this first season? Uh, just every day. Growth has, has been consistent. You know, there have not been any peaks and valleys. It's just been he's, he keeps going this way. And 
Um, you know, I just think he learns more and more every time he goes out there. But you've seen him consistently impact the game in all of our games. And uh, we're going to continue to need him to do that for us. Um, and so, um, you know, the, the tough part about being a rookie is, you know, it's at this point right now where the college season's ending and then you still have, you know, seven or more games after that. So, you know, he's just got to stay consistent with his routine. And, um, but he's been, he's been productive for us and uh, he's going to have to continue to be that for us. Just with, the, with Michael Davis, down the stretch of last season, I think we saw him coming into his own a bit as a, as a coverage player. It seems like he's been a bit more confident more inconsistent this year. Any any reason for that? Do you feel like that's that's happened? And sort of what's your assessment of maybe how Michael's played this year as compared to the second half of last year? Well, we haven't played well enough in the secondary. So, um, you know, it just hasn't been consistent this year at all. Uh, that's where we've fallen short in the passing game this season. And, um, you know, he's a guy that's working hard and he's just got to stay with it and um, continue to get the confidence on the practice field to go out there and take it to the field. Um, and, you know, we're going to need that starting this week against Baltimore. they got a good group of receivers. And, you know, it's, it's him in the whole secondary. It's not just Mike. It's, it's, it's the whole secondary. We need to play better. And, um, and that's a big focus for us. What do you feel like you guys have gotten out of Eric Kendricks this year, as a, both as a run defender and a coverage Man, and leadership? A lot. You know, I'm just one of the, one of the best additions that we've made uh, since we've been here. Uh, just a commander, a guy that has really, I think, solidified the interior of our our, our defense, you know, you can see the, the big jump that we've made in the run game. A lot of it's because of what he can see. Key diagnose, and he's an outstanding tackler. Uh, he made a couple big time tackles in the last game. And then from a pass defense standpoint, like there's no one in the middle of the field that's been better than him, you know, in the last decade in terms of matching patterns and playing in the passing game. So all that knowledge that he's given to K9 and, and that group of young linebackers, you know, Nick and, and Dayon and Amon, uh, you can't minimize it. You know, he's just been, you know, one of those stable, steady forces for us. And um, I've really enjoyed coaching him. Do you, do you feel like this season he's been at that level past defense-wise that oh, he yeah. earlier in his career? Definitely. I mean, I've, no, I mean, outside of the people that coached him in Minnesota, no one's watched him more than I have. So I know who I'm watching, and uh, I think he's played, you know, exactly how we hoped he would for us. Uh, as far as um, <clears throat> two-minute offense, we've talked about that a bit just in terms of the protection. You guys have given up. I think five sacks, two-minute situations that you've been trailing this season. Mm -hmm. Is that anything schematically that you can point to from a protection standpoint that needs to improve? Is it just you know guys losing in one-on-one -on -one situations that are leading to some of those sacks in the in the two-minute situations for you guys offensively? Yeah, I think each sack's been a little bit different. I think you know it, so much goes you know is made of the O line giving up the sack, but there's a lot that happens outside the framework of just the protection. Um, that leads to a sack. You know, it could be the timing and rhythm of the play outside at receiver, uh, guys getting to their spots and being at the appropriate depths. And, um, you know, and, and certainly there's schematic things that we want to make sure, especially in the known pass, to take care of, you know, some of the tough rushers that you're going to have to face. And, you know, every week there's, there's going to be, you know, a handful of guys that you have to have a plan for. But, um, you know, it's just I think it's, it's us as a team on offense uh, executing better, all 11 guys, not just the O-line. Um, you know, and I thought I, I really thought that offensively, up until those last two drives, that we had really moved the ball, you know, the entire game. And you know, even with that said, even the last drive, I mean, you know, you you gave yourself a chance on one of those passes to, to get down there and score. So um, that, it's a good group of guys, and um, Baltimore's got an outstanding front. So we got to make sure that um, we're on the screws and that we have a really good plan. And um, eleven guys are playing together because they've got a good defense. Uh, they're, they're number one in sacks. What what challenges does Baltimore front seven present? Well, they have you know they have a lot of people who can rush the passer. You know, they've got interior pass rush. They've got outside pass rush. They have DBs and linebackers who can blitz. Uh, and so when you take just the front, they've got an outstanding front. Um, but then their linebackers, you know, their two linebackers are as good as anybody in pro football right now. Um, when you have Roquan and Pat Patrick Queen, um, and then they've got some DBs that can rush too. Um, and so you factor all that in, and then you've got, you've got a group that's, that's dangerous. They've had to lead a lot in games, which gives you a chance to rush a lot, and you know, they're capitalizing on those opportunities.